Let us do this second topic for this session. Let us do Gordon's model and then we'll compare both the models. See, Walter model is not good in all the aspects. If you talk about Walter model now, it has serious limitations. We'll discuss the limitations of Walter and Gordon after we have finished both the models that is regarding the school of theory of elements. Now, let us do the second theory under the theory of relevance. Let us see Gordon model. The modern Gordon suggested to be one of the popular methods under this theory of relevance. Now, he also said that dividend policy of a company affects the value of the fund. And how does he propounded it? He propounded based on the following assumption. First of all, assumption was the firm is an all equity firm. There are no debentures in the capital structure. It does not have any external finance, no borrowed capital. Similarly, cost of capital and rate of return are constant. The firm has a long life. There are no taxes. Similarly, retention ratio, that is a retained earning ratio, is constant. Similarly, cost of capital is greater than your growth rate. Certain assumptions you need to keep in mind under the Gordon model. So, how do you compute under the Gordon model? You find the price of a share is earnings per share into 1 minus B. B stands for dividend payout ratio. So 1 minus dividend payout ratio gives you what? Retained earnings ratio. So in short, you can say earnings per share into retained earnings ratio. Divide the full equation with your cost of equity, that is capital capitalization rate, minus growth rate into rate of return. So keep in mind what you have to do. So when you're finding the price of a share, you take into account various things. In the numerator, we focus is on the earnings per share and your Retained earning ratio. Retained earning ratio, how do you find 1 minus B? B stands for dividend payout ratio. Divide the full equation with your capitalization rate, that is your cost of capital or cost of equity, because you're assuming over here the firm is an all equity firm. Minus with your B into R. B stands is for your dividend payout ratio. R is the rate of return. This is how you'd find out the price of a share or the value of a share under Gordon model. Let us do a small illustration to make it more clear how do you do it under Gordon model. Now, given as the illustration, rate of return on investment given to us is 15%. Cost of capital is 12%. EPS is 10 Dividend payout ratio is 80%. Now, what do we need now? EPS, EPS given to us is 10, 1 minus B. So, B, dividend payout ratio is already given to us as 80%. Cost of equity is 12%. Minus with your dividend payout ratio into rate of return. Dividend payout ratio will be how much? That is B. That is your 1 minus 80%. That is your retained earning ratio comes to 20% into rate of return. That is 12%. So, when you solve this equation, what do you get? 83.33 is your final value of a share. Keep in mind the various concepts over here as well when you do it as uh, under the same. Now keep in account what do we take into account is the earnings per share which is given to us as 10. 1 minus B. 1 minus B stands for your retention ratio. So 1 minus B. So 1 minus B gives you dividend payout ratio. So dividend payout ratio is already given to us as 80%. K stands for cost of equity that is 12%. Minus B. B is your retention ratio ratio. So, if 80 percent is dividend payout ratio, how much will be retention ratio? 20 percent into rate of return which is given to you as 15 percent. To solve this equation, you get 83.33. Now, what did Walton Gordon model focused on? It focused on same thing. First of all, earnings per share. B was the retention ratio. So, 1 minus B gives you the dividend payout ratio. Keep it clear. Divide the full equation with cost of equity minus B into R. B stands for what? B stands for retention ratio into rate of return. This is how you do it under Gordon model. Now, if you see Gordon model focused on certain other aspects, it focused on dividend payout ratio and retained earning ratio, which Walter model didn't focus on. Each of them had their own theory when they focus on how the value of the share is maximized. But if you still, if you see the several criticisms for the Gordon model as well. Similarly, major limitation of Gordon model, as you can see, it assumes it's an all equity firm. There are no debentures and as only equity finance is used. Similarly, present day building is not practically viable. Similarly, other limitation of this that a normal assumption was cost of equity and rate of return are to be constant. As you can see, practically it's not possible and practically a firm has to pay taxes. We can't assume there are no taxes. There are various criticisms of Gordon model. But Gordon model actually focuses on dividend payout ratio and retention ratio. Previously, what it was Walter model. And Walter model, you can also say, is not a complete method. It also suffers from various drawbacks. Similarly, one of the major limitations over there was that it assumed there is no external finance used by the firm. 
Similarly, it is not practically applicable there as well. Similarly, it assumes constant return same. It is not practically possible. Return may increase or decrease depending upon the business situation. Similarly, according to Walter model which you covered before, it is based on constant cost of capital, which is actually not possible in real life. So if you see Gordon and Walter, both of them have certain limitations. But both of them actually said that the dividend decisions are very important and they are relevant for the value of the company. They impact the value of the shareholder.